Hey everybody, this is Logan with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. We're here in our beautiful hometown of Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, about to showcase a grid tied solar system that we designed for one of our local clients. We're here at Mitchell's residence just outside of Flagstaff. Uh, he recently installed a grid tied solar system. Uh, to give you a little bit of a background on what a grid tied system consists of, it's uh, actually one of the more simpler type of systems that we design. Uh, Pretty, pretty straightforward. It's just solar panels feeding uh, an inverter, in this case, microinverters. Those feed the loads in your house and then any excess that you produce gets sold back to the grid. Uh, this specific system does not have any battery backup. So uh, any, any power or energy that's consumed at nighttime when the sun is not there to help, uh, it's just purchased from the grid as you would normally. And then uh, any excess that gets produced during the day that gets sold back to the grid after it covers all your loads. Uh, one key characteristic to keep in mind about a straight grid tied system like this, without batteries, uh, the system is required to shut down or cease production during a grid outage, and that's uh, to satisfy anti-islanding requirements. This system here behind me on the house is an all end phase system. Uh, there are 52 solar panels, uh, REC 320 watt panels, I believe it's about 16.6 .6 kilowatts for the solar array, uh, 52 N-phase IQ7 Plus microinverters, and then all of the uh, racking and mounting hardware is Iron Ridge. Uh, so we're here in Flagstaff with Mitchell, and uh, he's agreed to let us showcase his system. Uh, it's a grid-tied system with N-phase microinverters. I'll let uh, Mitchell here introduce himself and uh, kind of tell us a little bit why about uh, why he wanted to go with a grid-tied solar system. As, as Logan said, my name is Mitchell. I, um, I've been wanting to do solar for years, many years. Um, and in fact, so much so that I wanted to do a full um, grid tie with battery backup. And I got held up for a long time because when you add the battery backup, it doesn't really pencil out very well. <laughs> Not the same way anyway. So instead of a six year payoff, I'd be looking at three times that. Right. I just started looking at the numbers and decided the grid tie makes sense. Um, especially given APS, uh, that's my utility, Arizona Public Service, and they have something called the RCP, the Rate Writer RCP, which is pretty, honestly, it's pretty favorable sellback. Um, so when you when you start looking at the numbers, it makes sense to do a grid tie. Um, and if you do a self-install, like in my case, cuts the payoff time in half. So I'm looking right about six years on this system. And uh, the in phase, we chose that. Logan and I chose that because uh, I have shading issues, and mm -hmm. it's a fairly complicated install, I think, in terms of trying to get panels in the sun. <laughs> um, so that's why we went with the in phase system. I just wanted the best of uh, what you could get for a for a shaded for a shaded application with microinverters. That's what we needed. So, Definitely. Yeah. And given given the way your panels are on the roof, uh, pointing all different directions on yeah. different roof faces microinverters was that was really the only thing that made sense absolutely so originally when uh, when Mitchell contacted us uh, the original design I think both of us thought was going to be pretty straightforward pretty simple uh, we were originally looking at a ground mounted array with uh, what was it two uh, sunny boy inverters I think That's it was right. two of the biggest sunny boy 7.7 yeah, kW string inverters and um, when I'll let Mitchell go into more detail on this, but his original permit plan to do the ground mount with the Sunny Boy inverters was not approved. And so plan B was to relocate the panels on the roof of the home. And again, because he has uh, all kinds of different uh, roof faces pointing different directions, uh, micro inverters was, was really the only solution that made sense. This system wound up being 52 panels. Uh, originally, we had it at 48 That's right. with the yeah. SMAs because I was able to, with the ground mount would have been beautiful. Yeah. You know, just southern exposure, tilted at the latitude, almost no shading issues. We have, you know, the tree behind me here would have given us a little bit, so we were going to put optimizers on it. Right, that's right. Um, but the county had a couple of problems with the structure, and they would have approved it eventually, um, but I would have had to move it so far in from the property boundary because of setbacks. Uh, that that gets into some plans that I had for the future. Hmm. So I want to do a guest house, a detached garage. Oh yeah, okay. And they would shade the array um, <laughs> eventually. So at that point, now I could have put it, you know, out here or maybe along my 
neighbor's driveway, but I, I just didn't want to do that to yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Any more than I wanted to look at it in certain places. So <laughs> I'm pretty picky about my view and, and the property. And so uh, we went with plan B, which was just put a few more panels on to make up for the fact that I have panels pointed north, right. northeast, northwest, right. you name it. I've got them up there. They're shaded. They're yeah. not shaded. I mean, there's every flavor of a uh, non-optimal <laughs> placement. I've got it. Yeah. One, one thing I will say about your system is that with the micro inverters, um, each, each panel has its own individual inverter. So there are any, any losses or shading or inefficiencies experienced by uh, a single panel in the system has absolutely no effect on any of the other panels elsewhere in the system. So, uh, it's, it's really, you know, independent production from each panel. And that, that's one of the big benefits in, in the yeah. end phase setup. And it's confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can see it in my production. So Enphase has a really neat way of looking at the production where you can see it as an animation. Okay. Um, over 15 minute increments. And you can just watch my panels light up. You know, the ones that get hit by shade, you can just see them go dark and the other ones are getting brighter. Yeah. And yeah. It's a really neat animation to see. Yeah. But it, it shows fully why we had to go with micro inverters because yeah. I have, there are times where I'll have six or eight panels that are out. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. The, uh, the the platform that you use with Enphase is called Enlighten. Um, it's it's free to use uh, with the Enphase equipment. It's a really, really powerful tool. I was just reviewing uh, some of your output and specs this morning and you, you can see each individual panel, how much instantaneous power it's putting out, the uh, lifetime energy that that specific micro inverter and panel has generated since it was installed. So um, very, very easy for you to see which panels are the higher producing ones, which ones are the lower producing ones. And then um, even more so if you ever had an issue, you know, maybe a hailstorm or something took out a panel, you had a big pine cone fall on it or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, right very, away. very, very easy to diagnose exactly which panel has the problem and, and get it resolved so over the years just kind of paying attention every once in a while you know in the winter time i'll walk out to my property and see those trees on the left what's getting shaded what isn't i definitely underestimated that yeah um really underestimated so there's a <laughs> lot more shading on that south, southeast facing roof than i thought oh, okay okay and that that animation is showing me so i have i have panels that are putting out half of what the non-shaded panels in the same azimuth mm. are putting out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's just the way it's going to be. I'm not cutting that yeah. tree down. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just going to live with it. Cool. I kind of just want to say something or emphasize that you did everything yourself, like start to finish. I think I think that's that's something we should hit yeah. on for sure. Yep. the the only The only exception to that is the conduit work. Okay. I hired somebody to do that. Because um, I know getting the radius and everything right. is pretty tricky, right. and I didn't have the bender anyway. Right. I've never done it, right. and I wanted it to look nice, so yeah, totally. I hired the conduit work out, uh, and that was good because I got—he's a former electrician, so and and works with APS now, so I got some pretty good information from him there, other information uh, and tips on how to do things. Uh, and then the panels, we—I had four guys come over and help me and my wife. Okay, because that. Uh, that is not a DIY job, the 52 panels up on that roof. Because that's literally 35 feet. If you look at the, the point of the house, the gables, that's 35 feet. Wow. To the ground. How, how did you get the panels on the roof? Um, bucket line. Bucket so, line. So, yeah, we basically, after picking it up, you know, you guys, of course, put pallets on my truck and my trailer. And I literally just pulled it around the back and I backed it up to the deck. And it sat there for three weeks until we were putting panels on the roof. And uh, just had... Four friends come over and help, and plus my wife. And if one, you know, my kids were in the back of the truck. They'd hand a panel to one of my friends who'd hand it up to the first roof, and they'd hand it up to the second oh, okay. roof. And somebody brought it over to me. So it was all by. It was just all by hand. Yeah. Wow. And wow. somebody then, you know, somebody would bring it over to me, and another guy who would hold it while I was trying to plug in micro inverters, <laughs> and that was actually surprisingly difficult because huh. they. The, the way the cables come out of the panels, there's a lot of slack. There's really no good place to take up that slack. Yeah. And so I had to go back and take a couple panels off because I had cables touch it. Yeah. I mean, that part was really a pain. Yeah. I was hoping to get it to like two minutes a panel. You right. Know? Right. And I couldn't get it under like four. Yeah. It was more like five minutes a panel. By the time they brought it up and I, you know, got, got everything tied and clipped the way I thought, zip tied away, 
the way I thought, but oh, then it was over. And I'll oh, know that that bar in the panel is leaning on this cable that's crossing oh, over. Yeah. And, okay, let's take that off and move that microinverter. I mean, that, that part was, uh, I wish I had thought that through a little bit more carefully. Yeah, yeah. But once you got four people there, you're kind of like, let's just get it done. Right, right, so, yeah. That, yeah. That is, I find, one of the most time consuming things with uh, even the work that I do for the company is the organizational part of it. And yeah. once you've got that or passed it and kind of have your roadmap laid out more or less, then, then it's pretty smooth from there, so. Agreed. Um, but yeah, just to emphasize again, uh, Mitchell did this entire installation DIY. Uh, he did not hire um, a, a professional electric company to come and do the install. It was him and some friends. And he had a little bit of uh, help with conduit building and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, yeah, from start to finish, this is, I would say, a, a true true DIY installed system. 20, 23 plus days of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start the tour. Mitchell's gonna show off some of his equipment. This is, uh, so he's got two, he's got a sub panel and then his mains breaker panel. So half of the system feeds into the sub panel on that double pull 40 amp breaker there. And then there'll be another breaker in the mains panel for the rest of the system. That way I didn't have to derate any breakers. So. Right, and then right. In my main panel, I had two 200 amp breakers. And then potentially, if Mitchell wanted to add batteries or storage in the future, he'd be able to power up this sub panel uh, during a power outage from the batteries. These are the end phase IQ combiners. Um, essentially, he's got 52 panels. I believe those are. Uh, split more or less into two uh, arrays of 26 panels each. So each set of 26 panels feeds one of these IQ combiners. Um, and then on the inside, there's actually four strings, right? So we've got four oh, strings okay. of 13. That's right. Kind of how it's right. Protected. And these strings, um, I've color coded my strings. So oh. I, can sh I can show you the plan here in a second, but you know, each string of 13, I gave them a color basically. Okay. So we've got a blue and a pink and uh, a red and a, or sorry, a yellow and a green. Cool. <clears throat> and so I know this breaker is my yellow. I know that's the panels that are facing. There's 11 panels facing north, northeast mm -hmm. and two panels facing southeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this combiner does have the Envoy built in. Right. Um, it's that model, but it looks like it's the newer model. I think the older models had a clear, this dead front was clear. Yeah. And you could see it. The, so. I remember the older, like what they did in the new version is they they took the, the case. as far as I know anyways, the they took the case off of yeah. the Envoy and they just, they made it more right. integrated. Into it's just the, a circuit board. Right. It's just a board now. Yeah. That's right. And then this is an Eaton style, the BR style bus. Right. Right. Which was kind of nice because actually getting breakers was non-trivial. Yeah. Um, I have square D main panels and I had to go far and wide to get breakers for my square D. The oh, okay. Eaton, the Eaton's I was able to get a little bit easier, uh -huh. but the, the square D's were hard to find huh? because of the COVID shortages. Oh, like their yeah. factory in Mexico just shut down. Yeah, everything is kind of wacky right now with that. So basically each, each set of 26 panels runs through its own production meter. And do you have a, and it looks like you have an individual disconnect for each one as well? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So each, uh, each, each set of 26 panels has its own PV production meter that lets uh, Mitchell or uh, his utility company, I suppose, come out and see what his system's producing. And each one of these is a dedicated uh, disconnect switch for each set of 26 panels. Uh, these are also doubling as his rapid shutdown initiators as well. So uh, one pull of either one of those switches, the system goes totally down, uh, shuts shuts off completely for the most part, and then that satisfies uh, 2017 NEC rapid shutdown. Well, I, thought, I thought they were great to work with, um, and it was a key in getting this system done, because this system was so tricky. I mean, how, how many hours did we spend on the problem <laughs> working through design quite, quite a few. Right? It was a quite lot. A few. So, and that process was all all free. There was no, hey, this is you know 200 bucks an hour or whatever, right? This was a free, um, I'll, we iterated through the design quite a bit. We did. Um, there were multiple phone calls and, and multiple different designs uh, and some changes we had to make. And 
that part I thought was was really smooth. So I was definitely happy with that. Cool. Yeah. And I thought I thought uh, we worked pretty well together in terms of understanding each other yep. and you know what you needed and what I needed as well to to make it uh, make it make sense. So. Yeah, and for me as a DIY guy, it was nice to have some guidance in terms of, oh, no, here's how you got to do 13 panels per strain. Yeah. Or, you know, walking through those kinds of decisions in, during the design process was was nice information to have that I wouldn't have had otherwise Absolutely. by myself if I was just trying to pick compliments. From Absolutely. Who knows where. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, big thank you to Mitchell for letting us come out here and showcase his system. Uh, if you have any other questions about grid tied solar design, installation, or any other type of solar application, give us a call or send us an email. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.